and one. My name is Patrick Dundas, and welcome back to another Integrated Interventions podcast. I'm the Director of Education, and uh, joining us today is Laura Flannery, uh, Scott Irwin, who is our Adventure Lead, and Robert Orth, who is a lead mentor. Uh, but all three of them have had a big part in the outdoor adventure piece to what we do here at Integrated Interventions. Uh, there are a lot of people that when they think of um, the Pacific Northwest, you think of recreation, you think of outdoor activities. And in North Idaho, we have um, a ton of them. So I'm going to kind of work our, our way around the room. I'll start with you, Laura. Um, you started out with us as a mentor and then you know worked your way up the ladder. And now you're a program coordinator. Um, can you speak to the importance that nature plays in a program um, like Integrated Interventions, particularly with where we're at? We have one of the most beautiful backdrops, I feel like, as far as the Pacific Northwest is concerned. Right. Absolutely. I mean, especially coming from, you know, being a mentor where I was very much so um, a part of the students day to day lives. And so being outdoors in nature, going kayaking, going snowboarding, even just going for a hike, like the vitamin D that you absorb out there. And, you know, it's just crazy to see that, you know, the happiness that comes over the students while they're outdoors. I mean, it's really beautiful to watch. Also, like kind of like, you know, trying something new. Like, for example, I'm thinking back um, when I was taking a student out to go kayaking for the first time. Very nervous, um, understandably so. You know, we're talking about being on the water and, and you're not just like in a boat, right? You're kind of in total control and you could, you know, flip potentially, right? So kind of working through that with a student and then seeing that laughter and joy once they kind of got the hang of it. And then afterwards, this student was in such a great mood for the rest of my shift with them. And so, you know, just being a part of that and, you know, um, incorporating nature into the day-to-day -day lives of our students, I feel is very important. Um, like I was saying before, it just puts you into that, you know, better mindset, in my opinion. Well, and Scott, you have um, really expanded in terms of um, the venture opportunities that we provide. Um, can you talk about what some of those opportunities look like? And then also working with someone that we have a lot of um, our students that come from, you know, more highly populated cities, urban environments. And this is sometimes their very first introduction to a more rural area. I mean, granted, we're not rural. I mean, we're growing, but it's, you know, we're in the city right now, but then five minutes later, you can be out in the middle of nowhere, so to speak. So can you speak to that about the importance of, of how that plays into your role as adventure lead? Yeah, absolutely. I think when they are used to being in a program, they're used to being in a house and going to the store and doing their chores. And then when you say, hey, want to go fishing? They're like, we can go fishing. And so you take them out, and like you said, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, they can be at a lake. They could be casting a line, maybe for the very first time out into a lake and maybe being shown how to tie a cinch knot on a hook, maybe being shown how to wait patiently or even how to test the line. And um, sometimes it's just talking. It's just being able to get out in an informal setting and be able to uh, do something they're not used to doing, like fishing, but giving them an opportunity to just relax and take a breath and enjoy being outside for once, you know. Um, where there isn't an agenda, there isn't a, um, a deadline for them. Uh, but we've done things from fishing to uh, ice fishing, axe throwing, uh, <laughs> there's all kinds of fun things that we've been able to go out and do. Uh, bowling for indoors when it's too icy outside. Uh, for those that like the ice, there's also ice fishing. And we have a number of mentors that are out taking students ice fishing and um, when it's warmer, people go play golf, and we were able to go out in the driving range and hit the ball, and um, it's just really interesting to see the look on their face when um, they're able to listen to what you have to say and put it into direct application immediately. And most of the time, you have to tell them, you know, a few times before they actually are getting it, and then they may or may not apply that if it comes to like a chore. But for some reason, you say, like, you take them out bowling, Okay, you might want to hold your arm out a little bit straight or have more of a follow through or keep your, your palm out a little bit. Whatever the, the advice is, it's like all of a sudden they're listening and say, okay, I'm going to try that. Or they just go ahead and try it. And this could have been someone that was 
more or less catatonic when it came to receiving instructions because they're in that spectrum where they're focused on something else completely and you're not quite in their headspace. But then you show them something new like bowling or whatever the activity and they're like, oh, how can I do better at this? Or let me try what you just said and I'll try to do that. Or let me try what you just showed me how to do, how you modeled it as it was being done. And I want to put that into application. And all of a sudden you have this breakthrough moment where they wouldn't listen before, but now they're listening and they're enjoying it. And you see that light bulb moment, which is like every teacher's yeah. dream when the student finally goes, oh, I get this. This is fun. I want to do this some more, you know? I think it builds a little bit of a trust too. You know, like they're trying what you're saying and they're realizing yeah. it's working. So that kind of builds a relationship outside of that. Yeah, exactly. Or pumpkin launching. Yeah, <laughs> which is another cool one that you had a chance to um, work with right around Halloween time with uh, North Idaho College and one of their clubs. Yeah, we have a, a three-person slingshot that we got for the program, and we found out that's not only a great pumpkin launcher, it also works for snowballs and water <laughs> balloons, so you have something that's for every season, but um, it keeps it light. They can go out and work at our, our farm. And while they're out there, if they did their chores done, they go, hey, let's go launch some pumpkins. <laughs> and uh, that's a lot of fun. And we're launching it at the compost pile, too. So it's kind of like accomplishing a task at the same time as we're some fun. It's putting a fun creative spin on it. Yeah. Um, Robert, you've uh, been big into rock climbing. I mean, overall outdoors in terms of adventures. Um, what is that like when you're teaching someone a new skill? Because in many cases, they have never done outdoor rock climbing. Some of the students maybe have been in an indoor wall, but it's a, a different game when you're outside and out in the elements. I was really excited that I was invited to this and thank you. Um, and it brought up a lot of different things in my head. And, and one big one is you're immediately in an environment where a student is voluntarily engaged in self-improvement. Um, and that's one thing I think of and it, it's from if you're playing disc golf with them, if you're rock climbing, there's a um, competitiveness. But it's not, sometimes it's it could be them against somebody else. But a lot of the, I think a lot of things we, we engage, the, a, lot, a lot of the outdoor activities we engage them with are they're competitive kind of against themselves and, and trying to improve how they do that particular activity. Um, for themselves, which I think can translate over to other areas of their lives. Um, and for the rock climbing, that was an amazing opportunity. And uh, I saw tons of success with that. A lot of them, like you said, hadn't ever really rock climbed at all or just gone on the indoor gyms. But um, again, on the self-improvement, you really have to critically think about what you're doing. Um, there's a lot of critical thinking involved in that. Um, even plunging pumpkins into the air or um, uh, disc golf or kayaking, the amount of critical thinking that has to go into it for success is fairly high, um, especially if they've never done it before. And since you're there and you've done it before as a mentor, they're looking towards you for to, to learn. Um, and so the focus is off of an indoor activity, usually technology. It's on to us, and we have a platform of speaking into their lives um, as far as self-improvement and goals. And then... Um, I think that paves the way for trust and friendship. Well, and relationship building, which is the name of the game as a mentor um, with integrated interventions. Uh, that's our biggest part to it is building that relationship. When you have some kind of common activity, um, especially when, I mean, there are instances where we find that the, you know, mentors and um, the student we're working with maybe have never done that activity but then they can learn it together. Um, has there been an activity that you ventured out on that you weren't uh, so sure about, but you learned with the student as you did it? 
I'm trying to think. Um, you know, for me, for the most part, <clears throat> I feel like I'm just naturally such an outdoorsy person. So I feel like for the most part, I've kind of done a little bit of all of it. So I would say it's more kind of like honing in on those skill sets for me. So I guess to a degree, it could be like for kayaking. Like, yes, I've absolutely done it. But for example, like my kayak I grew up with, it's a it's a sea kayak. Whereas the kayaks that we have here are more like river kayaks. So they kind of handle a little bit differently. There's not as much stability to it. You know, so it was kind of fun with my particular student I'm thinking of um, to kind of like experience that balance together in a way. Bocce ball. That was one I hadn't played much. I've and so, yeah. That, yeah. yeah so. I've never played bocce. I don't even really understand what bocce ball is. It's all terrain horseshoes. It's fun basically. in the forest. Yeah. I've never played okay. bocce ball. Isn't it something where you like throw the ball and then you have to get the other ones closer to it? Or? Yeah. Okay. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So if you have some um, challenging terrain, like a forest terrain, that also makes it interesting. But that's the cool thing about North Idaho is that there are so many different types of terrain and that you can do so many different things. Um, like I, one thing I love about living here is you know huckleberry picking for example um which is very much different than your traditional other forms of berry picking but to be able to introduce a student to that had the opportunity one time to go out with a group of of uh students where we went out there and they're like so how do we get to this why do i have to go up so far why do i have to go up so far in terms of elevation to find these and explaining all the life lessons and as an educator um, there are teachable moments in just about everything. Um, can you talk about those teachable moments and um, what that means as being a mentor and how we, I guess, how we get there? Because what people don't realize is that um, we are a therapeutic program, but therapeutic opportunities exist in so many different elements besides just being in a room with a therapist. So can I start with you, Lauren? We'll work to Scott and then we'll work to Robert and on back. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess for me, um, you know, like you said, you know, there's teachable moments and so many things. Um, but for me, for being outdoors, you know, in that informal setting, like you were talking about, it kind of opens the door for just some different types of conversations where students will kind of open up a little bit more and start kind of sharing some of their past. Um, and it, it just kind of opens the door to kind of discuss that a little bit and talk about the future and then to kind of problem solve a little bit while also having fun. So, you know, I think back at different therapy moments. Like for me, if I was students, sometimes we have better conversations when we're doing art at the same time. So, you know, playing a game of Frisbee golf, for example, while having that conversation um, I feel like we can mm. accomplish more in the sense of, you know, kind of learning some of these different lessons. And it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, this is how you should throw the disc to get the furthest range. Of course, those conversations are happening as well. Um, but I think of Frisbee golf in particular because it is, you know, a, kind of a close sport in the sense that you guys are both kind of playing right next to each other versus kayaking. You could be a little bit apart and you're not going to have a shouting conversation about something. Um, I guess maybe depending on the student. Um, but so like I can think of so many times when I've taken a variety of different students out and about like halfway through the game, we start having more in depth conversations where there are some more just like teachable moments. And it could be something as simple as like a dating opportunity. Like you're interested in this guy, but I've never dated before what would a healthy dating relationship look like? And so then we can have those conversations while having fun. And I feel like we accomplish more and the student maybe takes away a little bit more because it is so informal. How about for you, Scott, what are some of the therapeutic benefits that you've discovered in, in working with students uh, in a, you know, outdoors nature type setting? Well, you get to know students and their personalities when you take them outside of the house, uh, even just going to the park. And like I said, playing bocce or throwing a, a disc golf around and just, uh, or even horseshoes, uh, you learn about people because, well, how would I do this differently? And well, sometimes they'll ask that, but other times they'll just start throwing it differently as they kind of like analyze it and do that on their own. Um, what I enjoy is the more of the downtime when, like say, when you're sitting on uh, two camp chairs that you brought out to go fishing and... Uh, you're just kind of, you're, you're doing your thing and you're waiting, but you're also 
thinking about the beautiful surroundings, the lake, the trees, the sky, and um, I said, this, where else would I want to be at this time? And, it, and it's going through the student's mind at the same time, and, the, and they're able to start saying, you know, I didn't always want to be here. I didn't necessarily want to be in a program, but I'm glad that I'm here. I'm glad that I'm here instead of another program because I'm able to be with people that are spending time with me instead of just like checking me off on a box, right? I mean, every student is different, and we relate to each of the students as a different person with different personalities. Um, we love all the students in a way because we spend so much time with them. It's, they become part of family, and I think that makes a big difference. Um, we enjoy spending the time with them. And it's not always an outdoor thing. Sometimes it could be like uh, just like going to see a movie, you know, or playing a game of chess. Uh, yesterday I played five games of chess with a student <laughs> just because he's like, okay, I want to beat you this time. Okay, let's, do, let's try this. How are you going to do it differently? And um, you can see that determination, and it really is a, another one of those light bulbs. A lot of opportunities for personal growth, yeah. uh, which is exciting and something that you had hinted on previously, Robert. Um, so for you, what, what are some of your favorite aspects of being able to get out there and mentor? Um, but also kind of my question is to the therapeutic benefits of venturing outside of one's comfort zone, because I know you've seen a lot of that where, and, and everybody in this room has seen that many times over of, of, um, students positioning themselves to be, um, involved in an activity that's going to push them outside of their comfort zone. Um, so what what are some of the ways that you've noticed that? So I guess we'll start with what you love about it and then kind of steer towards uh, venturing outside of a comfort zone in order to um, get to the end of an activity, I guess. Yeah. So I grew up adventurous. Um, my best friend was about 10 years older than me, um, which is a lot uh, growing up, you know, 15 and then a 25-year-old. Um, so you look up to him a lot. He wasn't the most responsible person. Um, so he loved going hiking. We loved going out, doing random things, but he wasn't responsible. So never told anybody where we were, um, never brought water, never prepped, never. I mean, it was, it was kind of a worst case scenario. And if, um, if something hit the fan, it's, it's, you're immediately not having fun. So, a hike alone's great, but if you get search and rescue called on you and you have angry parents when you get back, it's it's not fun anymore. Um, and so I think what's influenced me growing up and trying to be a responsible um, mentor and and digging into that idea and um, is and and what we get our students to think about is, I remember. I was kayaking above early spring. It was cold. The water was cold. Um, you know, 40 degree water. And um, going across the lake and we checked out, we found an old mine shaft and uh, super fun. But every step along the way, I was able to have the conversation, the responsible conversation of, look, be careful. Because if we're not, this will not be fun at all <laughs> on, on many different levels. Um, and, and I think setting the stage for a very responsible conversation like that. Um, and it's like, what, you know, and then when you get back, it's like, look at how much fun we had and, and we were careful, nothing bad happened, but it's cause we were paying attention. Um, and looking after one another. Um, and, and that's what I really enjoy is being able to be in a position to have that, that sort of conversation and not feel like I'm a, a, their dad or, or their mom. Um, but it's like, we're both trying to have fun here. I've been hurt. I've dipped in very, very cold water. If you haven't, you don't want to. I could tell you, <laughs> you don't want to unintentionally be in 40 degree water. Um, intentionally, that's another conversation, but, um, uh, if these things, if we're not paying attention, not being careful, um, it's just not a situation we're, we're looking to be in today. 
we're looking to have fun, explore, adventure. Um, and so that's what I really like. And the spontaneity of, of different adventurous students that um, come and, and they just, the feeling of wanting to be free and not sheltered in, which you get from an indoor environment where there's walls, there's stuff, um, there isn't a lot of freeing, there's not a, a freeing feeling about that. So getting the students outdoors is, I think, taps into um, a natural free feeling um, that they, that's therapeutic to them. Um, as well as, as going on random adventures with no goal in mind. I remember one student, we went just exploring while driving. I didn't, I didn't bend to, it was Cataldo um, over there. And I were driving the, the random streets out there. And I, he's like, do you know where you're going? I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> never been out here, but we're having fun. And let's just pay attention to our environment. And he had, he had seen something down in a valley off the road. And I was like, all right, well, let's find a parking spot. And we parked, we walked down and there was a bunch of glass and stuff. Great conversation for being careful. And, um, but during that time we had found like a, an elk skull and he was, he was so excited. <laughs> I don't think he's, he's ever seen one. Um, and it's not like you're close to elk a lot to see the size to see a skull. Um, that was a huge thing for him. Um, and it was adventurous. It just, it hit all the adventure markers for him on a personal note. And I took a couple pictures and the, like the certain things we, um, activities we can do, the smiles we get, that's a genuine smile of enjoyment. And, and that's, um, something that's really cool to see and as a success because a lot of their lives are it's, there's a lot of hard decisions and they're in a tough place that's why they're here and to see a smile like that and to be able to tap into that um is 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 great and um the second part was a therapeutic yeah, like kind of We're expanding. We're all talking about and, therapeutic. Yeah, it's things, all but, at the end of the day. This is yeah, all right. therapeutic, but mainly focused on um, the idea of expanding, pushing past comfort zones mm -hmm. in there in a therapeutic um, environment or activities. Uh, you know, that's a very unique thing about our program, and not being like a traditional, you know, RTC, is that we're able to kind of simulate more of what real life looks like. And the natural consequences and what you were talking about um, of being careful. For example, if you're uh, going ice fishing with someone and there are certain times of the year where you don't want to venture out on a lake to try to go ice fishing because the likelihood of them falling in increases substantially. And so that safety piece, um, there's so many correlating life lessons that we're able to bring back to what we're uh, trying to achieve with our students and preparing them to be the most you know, independent version of themselves. Um, so how does that relate to say mass, like the, the idea of the outdoor activities, the experience and mastering new challenges? So, um, I'll start with you, Laura, and your experience, but what has that been like for you? Because you've been able to see students that take on new challenges that lead to, um, a wide array of life skill, life skill experiences that maybe initially they thought, well, why am I doing this? How does this relate to this? Why should I do this? And then they're like, Wait a second. I get it now. Right. So, you know, right out the gate, you know, I think of a particular student um, who we went out hiking together and, you know, it wasn't like we had a clear trail map in front of us. Right. So we just kind of walked and we took a couple of turns. And what I did is I had the student try and navigate our way back without my help in that. So a couple of little trial and errors in there and some bumps. And I kind of like guided them along that, um, you know, that trail, I suppose, and then taught them, you know, northeast, southwest, and then I'd have them point that out to me randomly through our journey back. Well, come to find out, it, you know, months later, um, you know, my students kind of being a little more independent, wanting to venture out a little bit more. And she had started to get lost um, in her own little community. And so what I did is I asked her to point out, you know, northeast, southwest. 
And based on the directions of the streets that she had given me, I was able to tell her to go east two blocks to get back home. So without her even realizing us, us going out on that hike and her learning northeast, southwest, and then picking out some different landmarkers as we're hiking, just for reference points, she was then able to utilize that skill set later in life in the program to find her own way back home. Well, and probably even teaching the bus system, for example, yep. Yep. is another one where that would come in. And this particular student, I know that you're referencing, is uh, that's one of their new things is they're learning how to navigate our mm -hmm. local regional bus system. And so that's another kind of cool aspect, um, I feel like, for, you know, transport. they're learning the transportation routes, but they're also learning how to navigate that independently, of course, with mentor help, but then they get that opportunity to launch out on their own. Um, and there's just a, a level of, I think, accomplishment and self-satisfaction that accompanies that. Right. Yeah. And I mean, at this point, this particular student is at that point, you know, um, she is navigating that bus system on her own. And she's not getting lost when at one point, you know, she would get lost in her own neighborhood. Um, so through these different, you know, guiding steps, um, you know, such as just being out in nature and having her show me how to get back and teaching her these little tricks and whatnot, without her even realizing it, you know, those were life skills that she was able to hone in on later down her road and that she's continually practicing and using. So we're seeing further independence and success with this particular student. How about for you, Scott? Um, and when I, I always like to kind of go back towards self-awareness because that's something that really seems to, is a, is a common one that we talk about, especially when we're in the outdoors and being aware of one's surroundings. Um, how does that play into your experiences that you've had? Well, when they're in an env environment where they're not really comfortable, they have to use more of their senses. And that's usually when you learn the most is when you're incorporating more of your senses, when you're listening and you're looking at what you're seeing and you're taking in the smells. Maybe there's even an opportunity to taste something. You know, it, it all adds into a memory that's going to be indelible with them. And if it's part of a learning context, like to say ice skating, realize I got to slow down, right? I got to take a deep breath, otherwise I'm going to fall over. And I've seen students go from hugging the rails, right, in an ice skating rink to the part where they're kind of venturing out away from the rail and then kind of like taking that balance and realizing I can do this. If I slow down and I focus, right, and you can see this is something they're going to carry on to all aspects of their life, whether they're taking a class somewhere or maybe it's just they, they're holding on a job. It's being able to focus on the moment and being able to see what the goal is even if it's just going around <laughs> the rink without falling down, without um, skating into somebody else. You have to be kind of spatially aware of people around you and um, just kind of take your time and enjoy that time together with, with your mentor, you know? Well, there's a power of being able to live in the moment as well, you know, kind of a mindfulness aspect um, that you've been able, that we were able to experience uh, Robert, can you speak to that, that, that power of, of being in the moment and just sure. leaving what is, um, may have happened because, you know, it's just life in general, there's always going to be something that happens that yep. throws us off. It's like, but how do we find a way to kind of distance ourselves from that previous situation and, and live for what's going on in that moment? Yeah, I think this, this hits on uh, redirection, self-redirection. Um, where for a lot of our students, um, a lot's going on. They have a lot to think of during the life. They don't know how they're going to make things better. They don't know how to accomplish their goals. They don't know how to get a job or interview. And all the, a lot of these things are rightfully causing a lot of anxiety for them. Um, and you got that you mentioned that in the moment feeling, well, they're in the moment um, with those things, but it's, it's, there's a, a negative aspect to that where they're overthinking a lot of things that are, are hitting on anxiety, anger, um, unknowns, fear. And that's what they're in the moment with a lot of the time indoors in their house in their bedroom and there's there's all night they're stuck with all that stuff 
um, during the day, we can pull them out of that environment and try to redirect them to be in the moment with something else um, that now they're not focused on hopefully what they're angry about, ang anxious about, um, but taking the time to, like you guys are saying, use the senses for other things. And that's why I say it hits on the redirection aspect of um, they're in the moment, but it's with other things. And those things are not causing them anxiety, hopefully, um, or fear or anger. Or, um, and so both are in the moment, both are two very different environments. Um, one's more in the head and one is just experiencing what's in front of you and uh, taking it in. And, and that could just be a, a peaceful walk. And as far as therapeutically and, and how this gets into their goals of independent life is if there's an amount of pain and suffering in their life or anxiety or fear or anything, that's always going to be there sometimes. And when they leave the program, life will still be uncertain and cause them anxiety. Or they'll always, every once in a while, look at their past and be depressed. Um, those things don't leave us as easily. Um, but during that moment, that self-awareness, what you guys were talking about, um, they now know that to take the time to go outside and that that is a therapeutic option for them. And they don't need anyone. Obviously, we take them out, but they don't need anybody to go on a walk. They could do that by themselves. And so to have a mindfulness, um, mindfulness of where they're at and to be able to monitor that and take time outside when they need, um, I, I see that as... A, an easy option for them and a, a constant thing we're trying to teach them to do. It's like a coping skill. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a free coping skill. You can do it anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Anywhere. I mean, and if they stay here, they're, they're now familiar with the outdoors here. If they move to another state, there's nature nearby. Uh, and, uh, and maybe they're in a city, but they can, um, there's different ways of exploring nature within the city as well. Um, or you have zoos or, or things like that. Or you, <laughs> as far as if we hear, if we hear them change environments and we know a student is going, moving back to a city, but they've been here where there's a lot more outdoors. You can have that conversation of, look, this stuff isn't going to be with you, but you know, maybe this now is a conversation. Let's look at the city you're going to be moving to and what they're, replicates some therapeutic options that you've taken up upon here. Um, as I first think of the zoo, just because there's a lot going on and it's uh, amusing and many different levels. So, <laughs> but. Well, this is just awesome because it, it hits on so many points that really, you know, we're playing that part in the journey to help prepare them for life independent. And, you know, an, an independent life looks different for every student. But the fact that we're able to work with them on a, you know, kind of a one on one level to determine what that looks like. Well, I, I appreciate all of you coming together today because um, you bring different perspectives, but one united goal of working with students in order to expand the opportunities that they have, but to hit on the core principles of preparing um, young adults for life outside of integrated and life in terms of, you know, how do we find uh, the opportunities for them to be the most independent version of themselves? And, and nature is a powerful topic. And I've always said, you know, if you're able to experience it, uh, count your stars because you're lucky. Um, and so I, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us and to talk about those individual, collective, individual and collective experiences. So uh, Laura, Scott, and Robert, thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank this you. Is great. Hopefully we have a round two because I, I, I know that, that we've only really touched on a small percentage of it. Got a lot. Really, this yeah, is yeah. a this 
warrants a, a part two for sure, <laughs> yeah. or even a part three, for example, because we, we can talk about this more all day. Absolutely. So. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Thanks.